Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get started, eh? I'm excited about this one. Do it. Cool. Look, I just want to thank Coach Miner for joining us. I'm super excited about this one. I first connected with Coach Miner back in 2016 on Instagram. And I stumbled along your Max Hoop Instagram page. I followed you. I reached out. I remember we spoke on the phone and we've been connected since. You've got a big following on your social media of over 30,000 people, which is great. Um, Coach Miner um, inspires the basketball community and educates them as well. He has interviewed a bunch of college coaches. But before we get into all of this uh, recruitment advice, et cetera, let's start with Coach Miner. How did you get into basketball? Where did you play at your Division I program? And what are you doing currently? Yeah, um, well, yeah, that was, I can't believe it's been five years already, man. It doesn't seem like that long ago <laughs> that we first connected. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, first, I appreciate you having me on. Definitely um, nice introduction. I'm, I'm uh, very fortunate to coach college basketball here in the Northwest part of the United States. And so I grew up in Oregon, the state where I still live. I grew up in Southern Oregon, had a good high school career. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to walk on at the University of Portland, uh, which means I wasn't on an athletic scholarship. So pretty much everybody else on the team was getting all their school, housing, books paid for through basketball where I was not. I was fortunate I had a pretty good GPA in high school and was able to qualify for quite a bit of merit-based scholarship, but I wasn't on basketball scholarship. So I played two years of Division I college basketball. I played when we beat Gonzaga. I got to play, um, travel around the West Coast and play in a lot of cool gyms and really enjoyed my experience playing at the college level at the highest division. Uh, then I got into coaching right after that, Emirat. So I coached at Southern Oregon University, which is an NAIA university. And now I'm going into my fourth year at Pacific, which is an NCAA Division III university. We're located just outside of Portland, just outside of Portland, Oregon. And uh, about an hour from the Pacific Ocean. So it's a great location. I love the Northwest. I love Oregon. Um, but yeah, definitely am very fortunate to have played college basketball and I'm now getting to coach. I've been a recruiting coordinator now at the college level, nine seasons. And I've been able to help a lot of kids through Max Hoops also that don't end up coming to my university. Um, and I'll help kids wherever they fit and find the best place for them if it's at pacific great if it's somewhere else that's okay too um it's all about just finding the right fit for the right kid let's talk a little bit about max hoops a system that is built to help student athletes out whether it's develop or also to move on into a college program now we've read i've done my research you have done some amazing showcases around the us which has got a lot of attention how did that idea come about yeah great question well i felt like i was a little under recruited out of high school I, and i think most kids kind of start to feel that way because most kids feel like they're a little bit better than they really are. So that makes it to where people or kids don't get the opportunities they might think they deserve. And so I felt that way. And so when I got out of college, I decided to start Max Hoops to kind of help those kids that maybe were under recruited from a small school uh, maybe not near a city. So we decided to uh, start Max Hoops. And it was been, it started just small camp had, I think the first camp we had had like 28 kids and seven college coaches. And now it's grown to where we do hundreds of kids a year, put them through the programs and we're trying to teach uh, those life lessons along with how to navigate the recruiting process. If that's something that a kid is interested in, um, we try to help educate them about the different levels of college basketball. Um, and some kids come to Max Hoops that just want to be good high school players and develop their skills. And 
don't have aspirations of playing in college, but a lot of the kids we help are trying to play at the college level here in the United States. So I've just been able to travel around the U.S. and help kids uh, find the right fit for them. That's awesome. Let's talk about um, the college system here. Now, when athletes in New Zealand and Australia, they click on TV and they go on ESPN, they see the big D1s playing. Everyone has got a dream of being in the NBA. That's a young basketball fan. Um, and whenever they talk to us, they say, I'm right, I want to go and play at a top D1 school. Now, obviously, as you know, it's very hard to do. It's very competitive. You've done it. Um, you've faced the challenges. What is your advice to student athletes that are approaching this as an option for them at the ages of maybe 15 or 16 years of age? What advice can you give them, coach? The main thing um, I would say, that's a great question. Um, I would say get better grades. And I know that seems like it would be work on their shooting or their ball handling, but having the grades is really important um, because like the university I'm at now, we don't give any basketball scholarship. So you could be 6'11", and jump out of the gym with a deadly three-point stroke, and we can't do anything to help basketball-wise. If you have above a 3.8 GPA, you know, if you're getting almost all A's, we can give you at least like half, at least, of that. So that's where having the grades will give kids more options. And I always ask kids, you know, what's better, more options or less options? And some kids are kind of like, well, um, uh, more options is better. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. More options. So the more <laughs> options yeah. will come, the better your grades are. So I would say get the grades. I would also say surround yourself with people that have similar goals. One of the quotes I love, Amra, is if your actions don't line up with your goals, change your goals or change your actions. So that's, that's, a good just, that's just advice for anybody, right? Like if you have a goal of having a big fancy house, but your actions aren't saving money and collecting to try to get that house, then either change the goal that you want to have that or change your actions. But you can't have a dream of playing division one college basketball and then not working on your game and eating junk food and doing all that stuff, your actions, your behavior, your habits have to be in alignment with your goals. Otherwise you're just kind of being a fool. I totally agree with that. And I think it's really important for athletes to hear because it's easy for athletes, especially at such a young age to deviate from the task ahead and from the, from the big picture. And I think that if they are focused and they set the right tasks in front of them and they're disciplined, they've got, they're setting themselves up for success, right? And so let's talk about some of the other avenues that athletes can pursue in college basketball. Obviously, there's Division One, Two, Three, the NAIA system, the junior college system. There's so many options to choose. And like what I go through with my athletes is I say, look, forget about the divisions and the associations. Just look at four things, the cost, the location, the academics and the basketball experience that you want to have. And then try and figure out where's the best fit for you from there. Is that something that you've focused on as well? Or how do you sort of tackle that approach? Yeah, that's a great one. I'm, I'm pulling out my notebook because I'm going to write that down. Those four things that you said, because I think those are huge i mean no, you just nailed it so you said location cost academics and the sporting program i call them the four pillars of college recruitment i like that a lot amrit i think that's uh i mean i think that's what i'm emphasizing to the kids i'd i'd say like atmosphere like there's some of those things that you could back or like kind of fit into those yeah but like size of school is one thing i always ask kids because sometimes like a school like university of oregon you know you're gonna have 600 people in your class you know like pacific our average class size is 18 
So I think just thinking about, do you want like that big state school, public education, frats, big football games, or do you want like a smaller, more intimate learning environment? So I think that's one that I would kind of add, but location, you know, if there's kids that want to stay close, stay on the West coast, or maybe they don't care. Maybe their location doesn't really matter. So I think obviously the academics that can kind of factor into the size of school. Right. Um, and then cost obviously is a huge one because it's some schools can give scholarships and obviously it all depends on the individual kid and the level they're at. Right. So to give blanket advice is tough, but if a kid's, like I said, 6'11 and can jump out of the gym, they could be looking for having full scholarships. But if you're like a normal human, you know, if you're not an anomaly, if you're not a freak or an outlier, then you need to make sure you have the grades, you've saved some money, you know, because chances are if you're, you're probably gonna have to pay something at least to go to school. So I think that, you know, and then the sport piece of that, you know, so I think location cost, academic sport, you know, then I would include like environment of campus, like whether that's, uh, you know, a religious university versus a non-religious university. Right. Yeah. That's another thing I would add in there is just, you know, some schools are very strict, you know, there's some schools where they're not, um, suppose like just more strict rules because they're more religious yes for sure oh that's like the, one social, the social scene the social scene on campus etc right yeah the atmosphere that like you said the social feel of the university which that can be tough to get if you're checking in from australia new zealand right because you can't really visit as much yeah but trying to do your research on the school obviously online, check the Instagram. That's a little tip, you know, like check the schools, lo the location, you know, and on like Instagram. So if somebody tags something, click on it and then see all the pictures of what people are posting and kind of give you a little bit of a feel for what the school looks like, what the people are like, are they all partying? Is it all pictures of beaches? Is it pictures of people in the rain? You know, like, so just kind of getting a, try to get a feel for the school since it possibly could be difficult for some of the athletes that you're working with to be able to visit prior to making a decision. I mean, I would say ultimately, I would hope that the student would be able to visit the university before they commit. But I know that's not always possible, you know, especially right now with COVID, there's kids making decisions that are sight unseen. Yeah, I don't think our Prime Minister is going to lift the, the quarantine rules for New Zealand, unfortunately. So if athletes do want to go to the States anytime soon, um, they're going to have to do two weeks of quarantine in New Zealand. And that's a, that's a challenge. And also just trying to book an MIQ spot at a hotel. It's, it's so hard. My brother's in Africa right now with my dad and um, they're playing tennis over there. And they've been trying to get a spot. And I think the next available spot, I mean, we're sitting in July right now, I think was in December. So it's crazy. It's really hard. So I think using that social media and other sources like going on Google, going on Google Earth, YouTube, etc. I think that's a great way of getting a feel for the environment and, you know, even follow some of the athletes on campus that are currently playing in the team. See if they're posting any things about the college as well. Um, Let's talk about the extra year of eligibility. Obviously, we've had a discussion about this on, on the phone, um, Coach, but I thought it'd be a great one to talk about because, look, there's a lot of athletes that want to go Division Two, II, Division One, Division Three, but sometimes that might not just be the case because of that extra year. Can you please explain about that extra year and the impact it has had on the college system with basketball scholarships? Absolutely. This is the hardest time in the history of college basketball to get a basketball scholarship or even a roster spot, because like you just mentioned, there's nobody in college that lost a year of eligibility. Typically, you get four years of eligibility. Um, you get five years in college to play four. So you only can compete for four years where now the NCAA, NAIA, 
everybody was granted an extra year of eligibility. So that's going to cause congestion at the universities where nobody was really graduating. So that just caused this year's kids that are seniors in high school to have a really difficult time finding universities to play at because these teams, seniors, weren't graduating. They were able to come back next year. So that's just caused it to be the toughest year in the history of college basketball to get a basketball scholarship or even find a basketball roster spot. So there's kids that are looking. I mean, prep schools are popping up where kids graduate from high school and then have another year um, another year where they're getting to go back to school. So prep schools are popping up and they can take kind of a gap year. Even some kids are graduating from high school and deciding just to work out and not actually play and just try to network and meet coaches. And that's the thing I would say advice wise is you got to meet as many coaches as possible. And maybe it's a school that maybe you're not really interested in, but maybe that coach knows somebody that knows somebody. The coaching circle is really small. Oh, it is. So yep. having an advocate in your corner, somebody that's pulling for you and talking to coaches and knows coaches at all the levels is really important. And just following them on Twitter and reaching out and you'll, you'll get ignored a lot unless you're six eleven, right? Like if you're a normal human, like, a lot of coaches just get, well, my inbox, I get 15 to 20 emails a day. So I always tell kids, like, what are you doing different? Like your email can't just be like every email. <laughs> yeah. So if you just put dear coach, I want to play at your school. Like the chances of me, like, you know, I might write back, but I'm, you know, just a little bit different than some coaches that everybody's busy, but if it's personalized, it's, if it's custom, if it's um, well-written, and obviously if you're good, there's a better chance of people getting back to you. But still, following coaches, reaching out, trying to build your network. If you are 15 or 16, you know, a lot of coaches aren't going to be talking to kids that young because they're having trouble keeping up with the 15, 16, 17, 18-year-olds, right? So yeah. I would just say – you know, trying to build that network, meet as many coaches as you can. And, you know, obviously getting better has to be the main thing when you're that age, um, getting good grades and getting better. I'd say it's less about exposure as it is building your network and get, you know, getting better. Like I, I keep, you got to get better if you're 15, yeah, 16 sure. and I, development totally is key. So get a good trainer get a good coach. And then when you're a sophomore or a junior senior, then you can look at trying to get exposure, but some people are selling exposure too young and these kids aren't getting the development that they need. I totally agree with you there. I think that also we are now in a situation where athletes need to be a little bit more open to the transfer option. Let's say there's an athlete as their dream is to go play division two um, on, on the West coast. If they can't get that then figure out a system that they can go and get minutes and get scholarship and they're, they're improving their CV. And then when you're ready to go, go on the transfer portal and go again, because you got to think of this as, okay, I'm trying to buy the best house on the best street right now. And at the moment, everyone is trying to do that. So it's going to be, it's, it's going to be very hard to land that property. So what you might do is buy another house a little bit away from the best street and you want to renovate it. So then you can sell it for more and then you can afford to buy that best house. And that does take time. College systems the exact same. And I give my message to a lot of athletes. Look, I've got a lot of friends that are college coaches. And obviously the last thing I want is for um, the, their athletes to transfer from their program. But if you're listening to this and you're an athlete and you're going there for four years, which is a long time, and your end game is to achieve a Division two spot, go to a Division one school or a top NAIA program, and you can't get there right away, you got to figure out where is the best environment for me for year one. This is a business deal, remember, and you got to make sure that 
if you are the product, where are you going to align that to grow? So then you can go and position yourself in a in better environment. And um, I think athletes do have to be open to the transfer thing. With conversations with your friends that are college coaches, coach, uh, minor, um, is, is a transfer thing ha- happening quite often at the moment? It is. And that's another point. Um, they took away the division one to division one. There used to be a penalty where you'd have to sit out a year. Right. And redshirt if you hadn't redshirted before or lose a year of eligibility if you had already registered as your first school or redshirted. But now, because of COVID and just some of the things, you can transfer and play right away. Correct. So that means there's a lot of guys that are getting temptation or lured away because people sometimes think the grass is greener somewhere else. And so the transfer portal is full. And a lot of college coaches now are recruiting out of the transfer portal rather than going after high school kids. Another reason why it's the hardest year for high school kids to find a place to play because the transfer portal has over a thousand names. So these coaches, instead of recruiting a kid that's out of high school, recruit a kid that's a few years older, more mature, probably has a little bit proven record and recruit that player instead of the high school kids. So it is a very difficult time, but Obviously, if that's a dream and a goal, then you got to try to hustle and you got to try to do stuff that the other kids aren't doing. So sending out one blanket form letter to every coach in the United States, slim chance that you're going to land a spot. It's better, I would say, to target and narrow your search down and really customize your email. Make sure they, the coach knows that it's specific to them and emphasize how much you'd want to be there rather than the shotgun approach of just sending it out to every coach. I guess at the end of the day, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And um, obviously being in the game for a while now, Coach Minor, you've got a lot of, if you pull up your phone, I bet you've got quite a few contacts, (laughs) cell phone numbers on there of college coaches, same with us. And um, when I talk to coaches, you know, we communicate with coaches very rarely actually on email. It's more now on like Facebook Messenger, iMessage, WhatsApp, Viber, um, and even Instagram. I had a coach reach out to me on Instagram about a player uh, for soccer. And so I guess like if you are going to try and contact coaches yourselves, um, you've got to think that, okay, this coach is going to be receiving about a hundred of these emails every day. How's mine going to stand out? And let's now talk about the last topic of this chat. I really want to pick your brain at this coach, Mana, because you're the best person to have on this that will be able to help us out. I want to educate kids about recruiting red flags, things that coaches do not like. Now, you've received a number of emails from college prospects, and you've also helped a lot of athletes get college um, deals done. What are some recruiting red flags that you have experienced or come across? That's a great question. Um, The obvious ones are the GPA, and I don't feel like I can emphasize that enough. Like if a kid has a 2.5, I'm not going to recruit them. I just can't because it's not worth my time or energy because I'm not going to be able to get them into my school. So why recruit them? So that's like a red flag. And then there's some like, you know, where I'm going to take more research. Obviously, if a kid's gotten it, like maybe they got a a minor in possession of like alcohol. That's like a pretty yellow flag where I'm going to do a bunch of research. Was it a poor choice one night or was it a like a continued pattern? Um, Some of the things I like to show up early to a game and see how a kid warms up. So I like to see, and again, different coaches are different, but for me, I don't want the kid, I'm not going to recruit the kid that has his hoodie up, headphones in, right? Like all about himself. I want the energy giver that's giving high fives, pepping up his teammates, you know, getting everybody ready for the game. So that's just, and that's me. And again, I think of recruiting kind of like dating, you know, like, there's certain turnoffs and there's turn ons, right? Like guy takes two charges in a game. Let's go. I'm, I'm a, I like that. A kid 
passes the ball out of bounds and then looks at his teammate and shrugs his shoulders or when they check out of the game, they mumble something under their breath or they're getting blown out and they start pouting and they stop playing hard. Those are things that are going to turn me off. And because how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if you're going to cut corners, if you're going to cheat, if you're going to pout when you're getting beat, I don't want you. I don't want to, they call them front runners, right? You're familiar with that term. Like somebody that's just, yeah. When the, everything's going right, you're good, right? It's easy to be a good teammate when you're winning and everything's going right. How do you handle it? So like, I kind of like it sometimes when I get to see a kid get his ass kicked. Yeah. Uh, not too much. I don't want to see a kid getting <laughs> the front kicked all the time, yeah. but sometimes I don't mind seeing it and seeing how they handle that. Yeah. Right. Because if a kid, you know, like I don't, I want a kid that I shouldn't be able to tell whether you're up 30 or down 30 by how hard you're playing your body language, body language doesn't whisper, right? Body language doesn't whisper. Body language screams and talk about a recruiting red flag. If a kid has bad body language, it's just a, it's just, and again, there's other coaches that will coach through that and deal with that. Not me. Just, I won't. If you have bad body language, bad attitude, if you're not a team player, if you're not selfless, can't play for me. So that, and again, like I said, that's recruiting some, like for me dating, I wouldn't have dated somebody that smoked cigarettes, right? That's me. Some people do obviously. Right. So it's kind of different coaches have different things that they look for selfishness, bad body language, negative attitude, showing up a coach or a teammate those are things that for me red flags what if you can't watch someone and you want to recruit someone in new zealand or australia do you look at this in the full game unedited uh match that they're playing in yeah great question um so i will watch i want to highlight film first because there's some kids that i can rule out by watching their shooting form you know just watching how they move And so I'm not going to, if I'm getting 15 emails, I'm not watching 15 full games. Right. Right. So their highlight film has to catch my attention. A trailer. Just a, yeah, just a sneak peek. And it's not just you, the one, three, you make every game, right. Show me a little of your diversity. I also like, you know, I watch other things in the highlight video besides just the ball. Cause I know it's going in. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not on the highlight film, right? So I don't have to watch the shot. I'm watching the bench, right? I'm watching to see how the bench reacts. If the bench is like, then I'm like, okay, that's probably not a good sign. If the coach is like, no, don't, okay, right? Like, so I want to see how the bench reacts. How does team react? You know, those things. So that's that's what i want to see is how the team how the teammates react i say including your highlight video some leadership stuff if you're a leader you know you pepping up your teammates you getting amped up include that stuff in a highlight film taking charges i love it right like gold yeah so those are just things that i want to see and then have a good half you know have a half that i can say hey can you send me a game send me either a full game or a half a game and then I'll watch and see how you react when you miss shots, you know, because I want to be able to see those things before I commit to giving a kid a roster spot. It's, it's so eye opening to hear that. I mean, this is what coaches tell me across different sports, whether it's soccer as well, you know, a soccer coach might look at when they're looking at a, at a player, they're not looking at the player on the ball all the time. They're looking at the teammates as well um, and what everyone else is doing. And I think this is good for athletes to know, like when you do give a coach some video, keep the stuff that coach Mana has said in mind, look at those things, see what's going on. And if the coach is worried that you're about to shoot, that's something that you should be working on. That's a good point. No, that makes sense. 
Coach, I think I wanna... there's a lot of things, you know, I kind of use the example of getting a job at Nike. Right. Right. Like everybody kind of wants a job at Nike. So when they put like an app, like an online application or like a job posting, the person that's doing the hiring probably gets as many emails as I do about people wanting to play college, right? They're getting 500 resumes. So how do you make your resume stand out? If you're applying for a marketing job at Nike and you submit like a resume, it's probably not going to get seen. Yeah. So you got to put maybe your resume on a pair of Jordans or on a basketball and then have it delivered to the person who's on the hiring committee, you know, like do something outside the box that's going to make yourself stand out in a good way. Right. So you got to think clever. You got to do something that other kids aren't doing because there's, there's 500 kids in my backyard that want to play in college. So what are you doing as a kid from all the way across the ocean to prove that you can play for me? Right. That's ultimately what I want to see is that you can play for me, that you're not a risk off the floor. You're a good kid and you play hard. Those are the things that I want to see. I bet you there's athletes listening to this, wondering what size shoe you are so they can send you a pair of joints. they want to send me shoes, yeah, <laughs> I do accept bribes. No, um, that's, that's funny. That's funny. But there is, there is ways to stand out. You know, obviously yeah. there's kids that hit me up on social media. You know, there, oh, if there's kids that are watching this that are interested in Max Hoops, you know, Max Hoops 3 is the Instagram Go back and watch some of the videos that I've done, you know, and don't always want to take. That's a lesson for you and me too, right? Like yeah. if you always were calling me saying, Hey, I need something. I'd be like, dude, I'm not going to help this guy, but there's all, they're like, Hey, I can help you out this way, Brant. If you help me out this way. Right. Absolutely. Like that. So there's kids that will hit me up on Instagram and just say, Hey, do this for me? Or can you introduce me to this coach? And I'm like, what have you done for me lately? You know, like, yeah. so maybe it's, you know, you watch five of my previous interviews and you ask me questions about what we talked about, because there's a lot of this same stuff that we're talking about or things that kids ask me questions about. And I'm like, I answered that, you know, I, in my last podcast, I talked all about that. So watch that video. And again, a way to impress me is to say, Hey, coach Miner, I saw your podcast where you interviewed Colin Henderson. I loved when you talked about mindset. Could you tell me a little bit more about how I can prepare and my mindset can get better? You know, things like that, right? Like this is brilliant. That's important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is important for all athletes listening to this, regardless of the sport. If you want something uh, and you want a coach to talk to you, if you give them something that, yes, I have taken the time out of my day to really focus on, on myself and better myself, but also I really want to learn about your program and this is what I like about it. This is the schedule I've seen you've had in the last few years. I see you've had a few good wins here. This is great. And you ask them questions about what kind of playing style they have, what kind of like information on what sort of athletic ability do athletes need to have. A coach is going to buy in more as opposed to you being like, hey, coach, um, can I get a scholarship for August 2022, please? And so, yeah. Well, Coach, Coach Miner, I just want to say, I, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy and um, it means a lot because I think that it's important for a lot of athletes to hear this and a lot of parents to hear this um, and help prepare themselves the best that they can for college when it's their time to go. Um, if you're listening to this, please check out um, Pacific University Men's Basketball. You can see the facilities that they have. You can check out the university. You can follow them on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, check out their website as well. It's great. Look, I've actually dealt with Pacific University through men's tennis in the past, and the coach there was also amazing, and I got to learn a lot about the university, and boy, it was awesome. I mean, the internship opportunities there are incredible uh, with big companies like Nike, so I was pumped and um, we didn't end up sending an athlete there. He chose another avenue, but I'm definitely going to be putting a player there 
um, in the future for sure. So definitely check out their program and also feel free to check out Max Hoops on Instagram. If you can't find it, go on our followers on our social media and you'll find uh, Max Hoops there. There's a lot of interviews that Coach Miner has done. You know, the more the more you educate yourself, the better it is. I think you should know a lot about the college system, whether it's Division Two, One, Three, NAIA, JUCO. The more knowledge you have, the better the process is going to be for you. But thank you so much, Coach, for being here. I really Absolutely. appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Always no. a pleasure, man. Thank you. We've got to get you to New Zealand, though. I want to visit, man, both islands. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll put, I'll put the works in now, and uh, hopefully when Prime Minister Adern lifts up the uh, quarantine rules, we can get you over here. Summer, October 2022. Let's What's the weather like in October there? Not bad. I mean, to be honest, New Zealand's pretty good all year round. We're not like That's what I've heard. Cold. Yeah, we're not freezing cold when it's in our winter like Canada or anything like that. It's uh I mean it's winter now, the sun's out, so it looks nice there. Yeah, yeah blue that. skies. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Well, thank all right. You well, you much. take care, Amrant. Good to see you, my man. Likewise, we'll be in touch. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy.